Hello and welcome to a tabletop bellhop board game bag check. Today at the hotel we are checking in this extremely popular, tons of buzz, heavy Euro game Coimbra from Eggertspiel. Uh, this one, there is so much buzz about this game. I admit I'm about a year late to the party. Uh, this is something I received as a grift for Christmas this year. I am really looking forward to digging into this game. That said, I have not played the game before. I have not actually seen it in person. I've not seen it at a local gaming event. So what I'm doing is I'm recording this live on Twitch right now, something I do every now and then to open up new games. Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash tabletop bellhop, and you get to hear my thoughts while opening this game live and getting to see the components at the same time I do for the first time. Uh, again, I am Mo Tuzno, the tabletop bellhop, your cardboard concierge answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Obviously, the question we're answering tonight is what's in the box? If you want to see answers to other people's questions, head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on gaming advice where I answer all kinds of questions, including things like what to do when a player can't make it to your game night or what are the best games for five players exactly when you only have five players. That's just a couple of our recent topics. Enough about me, though. Let's get to the game. We are looking at Coimbra from Eggert Spiel. I'm going to do a quick look at the back of the box. If you want to see the back of the box, you can find that online easy enough. It is the age of discovery, and Portugal's largest cities are prospering. Lisbon, Porto, and especially Coimbra with its famous university. As the head of one of Coimbra's most wealthy houses, you seek to earn prestige during this prosperous era. In an effort to garner the best reputation, you must clinch favors from the city's most influential citizens, clerics, scholars, council members, and merchants, with a bit of coin or a little extra protective detail. Interesting. While there are many paths to victory, the best player will always seek to optimize their opportunities with every roll of the dice. Coimbra introduces a unique dice mechanism wherein the dice player's draft will be utilized multiple times every round and various aspects of decision-making, combined with ever-changing synergies between available tiles and cards. No game of Coimbra will ever be the same. Uh, we have a game board, four player boards, four crown tokens, 24 monasteries, 56 cards, one rule book, 15 voyage cards, four favorite tiles, 12 die holders, one cap tile, four influence scoring tiles, 100 discs, eight markers, nine, five die tokens, four programs, four lions, <laughs> four lions, 13 dice. That's a lot of stuff. Let's take a look at what that looks like. All right, first thing I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna cut the shrink wrap off. I'm just using your standard hobby knife here. Always cut away from yourself. So this plays ages 14 plus, three to four hour players up to two hours. Should have probably did that while I was reading the box. Alrighty, what do we get in Coimbra? Alright, right up the top we have an ad for Coimbra in, okay, it's a catalog. I'm like, why would you give me? So, obviously this company does Coimbra, Great Western Trail, and Heaven and Ale, all games extremely well regarded. Hey, people shopping for me next year, Great Western Trail. It's one I want to try. Alright, rule books. We have rule books in English. Uh, we'll just start right with it. Nice square, big, thick rule book. Nice, easy to read text on a light background. That's pretty. That's that's a lot of art and only a little bit of words. Lots of good use of negative space. Color-coded sections. This looks like a very solid rule book. Looks very readable. Oh, I like the color coding. I don't know what it means, but I like it. You can see that the different sections are in three different colors here. So far, this looks like a good one. This looks like a really nice, very detailed rule book. Um, bonus overview. So no, we're still going. Still going. And bonuses, bonuses. Okay, so now we're looking at bonuses of the favorite tell. Most common rewards. Wow. So we're still rules. We're not even into reference. This definitely does kind of look like reference. We are looking at a big 16 pages right to almost the bottom of the 16th page. That's a pretty hefty rule book. Up next, we got rules in another language I don't personally care about, but it's always nice to see publishers support multiple languages. And then we get right to punch boards. Nice, clear punch boards. I guess those are the most clear dice I think I've ever seen. Um, all various shapes. 
things obviously in player colors. Don't know the game well enough to know exactly what these are for. Looks like you're going to have different eras or stacks. Iconography looks pretty good. Looks easy to see from across the board. Oh, just one punch board for the whole game. Okay, impressive. I was expecting a whole bunch of cardboard. Not a lot of cardboard. Oh, plastic box insert. Bonus. Board. All right. I don't know how much you'll be able to see of this on camera. because This is not a small board, though not huge. There you go. I got it all in. Very nice. Very bright, crisp colors. I, I really dig the colors on this. There we go. Get rid of the, the... I'm trying to get rid of that bit of glare, but it's not working. See, my new overhead light helps, and it doesn't all at once. Obviously, those tiles we just saw are going to get it on this main board. Uh, this is an economic game. Obviously, look at the market here. Nice, clear board. Uh, Single-sided. I got to admit, I, I actually like seeing just black. That means I didn't waste any money putting a pattern on the backside of a board I'm never going to use. Nice insert. I dig that. I don't know how functional it is until I actually try to put the game away with it, but that is a nice looking insert. I dig that they match the color of the blue of the water to the insert. That's just a nice touch. Oh, look at this. That is a impressive insert. Uh, I have to assume these are for the players because there's four of them and it's a four player game. Uh, one sided. See, here's the thing. Like, I wouldn't have minded if that was black. I don't need art on the back, but I don't mind. Nice thick boards. None of that. This is just heavy card. I'm just going to put that back right where it was because that fit there nice. Uh, we're looking at cubes. We'll pull out a cube. Um, what's going to show up best on the camera? Probably red seemed to work really well last time. It's a red cube. Decent size. Bigger than your usual resource cube. Um, in this case, we're going to slide things down just so you can see it on the black here. Red cube. Then there's some type of meeple. Again, we'll stick with red. There's one of these in each player color. There are two cubes in each player color. Not your usual meeple, more of a pond style meeple. Then we have what looks like a lion rampant. This is a cool piece. This is a neat looking, neat looking meeple. Ooh, and it's on the floor. Where did the lion rampant go? Okay, we're gonna switch to yellow. And I'm gonna remember to get that right later. So there's the yellow lion. Then we have a ridiculous number of discs in player colors. A ton of discs. Anyone joining partway through is probably like, why is there only... Yeah, I can't. So a disc. Why is there one yellow one out there? We have discs in all the player colors. Then we have whatever these are. Dice cappers, I think they mentioned. So dice cappers in the color. So this is an interesting thing. Once I get a die out, we'll take a look at one of those. A deck of cards, hefty deck. We'll open that up after. And the dice. They're pretty standard D6s in a rather interesting mix of colors. We'll take out, yeah, it's a, it's a D6. It's what you'd expect. Um, that color is really not, camera doesn't like it. Let's go with green. It's a die. And then supposedly there's like these die cappers. Yeah, see so you can, I don't know if they go underneath or on top, but you have this thing that the die can go, sits right in. That actually nests in really good. It's not gonna fall out. Don't know what mechanic that's for. No, what's the thing. In order to save time, I am just going to toss this stuff back into the box. Of course, I took the dice out. Now they don't quite fit back in. So I'm going to ditch that because there is a specific spot in here to fit the dice. So yeah, if you can tell, there's a specific spot for all the dice. We just put those in there. I'm going to throw this in its spot this in its spot, the lion in its spot, the discs I have to assume probably go up here, so I'm going to throw this disc in here, and then we're just going to toss the rest of this back in there, because you don't want to watch me sort through this, then we'll take a look at those cards. Back, 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 cards. No nice, easy open, easy release thing. 
That would have been nice. Still not hard to open though. That opened pretty easily. Okay, worth noting right away, cards have a slight warp to them. I don't know if you can see that on the one card. That's slightly disappointing. It's not bad, but there is a bit of a warp to the cards. That's straight out of the package. Gold deck could use to some weight put on it. Um, okay, I see at least two different types of cards. So I'm going to sort through these really quickly just so I can do this first and then I'll hold them up. Um, these all look like the same type. All right, so at first we obviously have some kind of location cards on the backs. Just shows a, a pattern with the waves and the sun and uh, compass rows. On the front, you have... Not working well. Okay, give me a second to kill this. That should be better. There we go. We'll go through a couple of those. Looks nice, clear, easy to read. Um, they all have the same picture on them. I thought maybe they were showing a map of the world and where they are. Some pretty solid looking icons there. Barbarossa, Barbados, Tangier. So we have a bunch of different location cards. Then we have the people you are going to try to influence. Uh, we got these in a variety of different colors. Rather interesting artwork, not realistic, um, but not overly artsy. It's not bad. It's, it's definitely distinct. I will put it that way. Especially that that's a very distinct looking character. Looks like every card has completely unique art. It's a nice touch. I'm not seeing duplication here at all. I'm going to some icons at the bottom. I don't know the games to know what these mean at all, so I can't really talk about it. This person's obviously with four shields. Let's say a nice mix of women and men, which is a nice touch. All right, we're not going to go through the whole thing. We have a deck of these. There's a ton. Oh, I am seeing some repetition. So I did see that character earlier. So the, not every card has unique art, but there's definitely a, a good mix of artwork here. Green ones and so on. You don't need to see every card. What I am going to do is show you these from the back because I just noticed they are numbered. So obviously there's going to be probably different phases. One, two, one, two, there, and threes. There you go. That is everything you get in Coimbra. Some bonuses there I was not expecting. I, I am... Very pleased by this insert. It's a nice, that is a very decent insert. It's got inset, you can see it. it tells you what to put where. Very nice touch. Bonus that I did not know was coming with the game. Very nice insert. Even a spot to put all those discs up here. I don't even know what's gonna fit in there, but there's some interesting shaped spots here. Rule book looks good, game looks good. Nothing to complain about. And yes, I know, I have a meeple to pick up off the floor. Um, what I am going to do, though, is I am going to take those German rules, and we're going to slip those right under here. This is something I do with all my games with multiple languages. That way I keep it with the game, but I don't need to keep tossing it aside every time I go to play. German rules are gone. Boards still have some stuff to punch out. Looks like there's spots for all that. English rules, advertisement. I'm not going to bother putting the advertisement back in the box. And that would be what you get in a copy of Coimbra from Eggert Spiel. Spiel. Um, looks good. I have no complaints about what I saw in that game. It's about what I expected. Lots of nice wooden components. Not as much cardboard as I expected. I just, I expect Euro games to have a lot more cardboard than that. Uh, looks good. No complaints whatsoever. Um, everything about what I saw in there was good. Bonus points for what looks like a very functional and useful box insert. Um, nice, solid plastic box insert. With people spending $40, $50 for box inserts um, from Broken Token, Meeple, Meeple Realty, or... Um, any of those other companies, it's nice to see publishers starting to get on board and including them in the games in the first place. Anything that makes a game easier to get to the table and easier to clean up improves your chance of playing it. And one of the Bellhop's laws are the best games in your collection are the ones that actually hit the table. Anything that you can do to make a game hit the table more often, I think is worth doing. 
And it's great to see publishers realizing that by putting things like inserts in their games when you get them. That's going to improve the odds of me playing Coimbra over, say, breaking out a different, heavier Euro game. I don't want to cut anyone up for not including one, but, but I may go, hey, I'm going to grab Coimbra because I'm not going to have to spend half an hour sorting bits. Uh, so that's it for my unboxing. That has been a board game bag check. Everything looks good in Coimbra. We're going to send that one up to the room. Actually, down to the room in this case. My game room's downstairs. And we'll hopefully get it played sometime soon. It's probably not going to be this weekend. This one's going to take me a bit to get to. Um, it's a heavier game. It's going to need the right group of gamers. It's probably not one I'm going to bring out to an easy mode gaming event here in Windsor. Um, if you do want to see my thoughts on Coimbra, though, when I do play it, the best way to do that is follow me on social media. Twitter at Tabletop Bellhop, Facebook slash Tabletop Bellhop, YouTube, Tabletop Bellhop, whatever. Anywhere online, you can find me as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Um, you'll get to hear about my thoughts of Coimbra as I play it. Instagram, Tabletop Bellhop. You'll get pictures when I first start playing Coimbra. Um, head over to TabletopBellhop.com. You'll find uh, reviews of games like Coimbra and other games. You'll also find answers to people's gaming and game night questions. Because the main thing uh, we do at Tabletop Bellhop is answer your gaming and game night questions. I want people to consider us a Dear Abby for gamers. Well, they'll write in and say, hey, this weekend I've got my aunts and uncles coming into town and they're great Monopoly fans and we're looking for something to play with them, but we don't want to play Monopoly. What can we break out? Stuff like that. If you head over to tabletopbellhop.com, you can find the answers to other people's questions. Plus, you can click on Ask the Bellhop and send your questions. You can also do that by sending an email to questions at tabletopbellhop.com. Or like I said earlier, I'm everywhere on face on social uh, on facial social media, whatever that means. On social media as tabletop bellhop one word. Hit me up, ask a question, and I'll get back to you. The last thing you can do that would be awesome is head to patreon.com slash tabletop bellhop and consider tipping your bellhop. For tabletop bellhop, I am Mo Tuzano, the tabletop bellhop. Good night and game on. <laughs>